Hi everyone, thank you very much for your time today. My name is Antoine Amand and I'm the Technical Director for Financial Services at Databricks. I'm uh, joining from a financial services background, having bridged the gap between business and technology. And today I want to show you the Solution Accelerator program that we built at Databricks to show you the technical capability of the platform within a use case you may be familiar with and to give our clients and our customers a head start on those use cases. In that context, environmental, social, and governance is a top level priority for our financial services customers, retail customers, or any large organization may have an ESG strategy, and how to migrate from a marketing concept of ESG to a data-driven and actionable insight. Through that series of notebooks, I want to quickly show you how your data practitioners within your organization will be able to leverage AI, advanced analytics to extract key information from corporate social and governance uh, CSR report using um, uh, advanced analytics, and how to correlate those ESG initiatives that were disclosed with ESG sentiment as the way your brand, your organization, or your suppliers may be perceived through the news analytics and bridging the gap between what was disclosed versus what was perceived to bring a true data-driven ESG uh, strategy. In this first example then, I want to start using um, information coming from, uh, from my financial services customers or so different uh, clients using all those PDF documents that I could find in the web. A document itself is usually released on a quarterly or yearly basis and contains about 100 pages long, is a 100 pages long document that contains few pages around hard metrics and a lot, a lot of different text where we want to effectively start extracting this text content in an actionable way using advanced analytics, scraping this content, being able to extract each and every single sentence and using uh, machine learning to really programmatically learn those themes, those topics. So naturally in the context of ESG, you will find some themes that were machine learned around supporting community, valuing employee, reducing carbon emission, uh, investing in a more sustainable finance, helping employees and risk management that is intertwined with ESG. That will help us as well, starting to categorize each of those key statements in a PDF document, drastically summarizing a document to uh, its core ESG initiatives. As you can see, without getting into the nitty gritty of the math behind, we can summarize a document that contains only 20% of a document may be actionable, may be specific enough towards those nine themes that we've, we've been able to machine learn and how you can then start comparing your different suppliers, your different investments, your different uh, competitors against those nine key metrics, such as valuing employees, sustainable finance, code of conduct, how much more this company is valuing employee compared to others, to bring that holistic view of your different um, CSR reports, and help you to drastically and programmatically then uh, summarize a complex 170 pages long document into nine key initiatives. Those were the key initiatives from JP Morgan uh, in this specific example. But you don't necessarily need to be a Python expert or a Spark expert to start interacting with your model. With our model stored therefore on MLflow, you can start creating this uh, simple analytics using a simple right click here. I create a Chrome plugin that will programmatically extract the key ESG initiative for a specific PDF document, scraping the, the, the content and scoring that specific CSR against my 50 financial service institution I've trained a model for. This example will show me that Barclays will be in the top 40% for everything related to supporting community. This is a simple example how to use that model programmatically or through the use of SQL, for instance. The second aspect is consolidating and correlating that with news analytics data. Now that we understand what was disclosed, let's look at what was perceived. We use news analytics data 
to scrape the content for the last 18 months of history. And as you can see, the data is massive and alternative data is publicly available, but noisy and massive, but available every 15 minutes. If we can drive some insights out of that 15 minutes time window, then we create a real-time view of an ESG rating. No longer waiting for a yearly disclosure, but can operate on a real-time 15 minutes window. So we'll be extracting the environmental, social, and governance related themes that we can extract together with the sentiment analysis to give this data-driven view, to give that sentiment analysis for each and every single business mentioned in the news, not necessarily related to the, four, the, the few handful companies we have a, a, a CSR report for, but really to each and every single business, medium or small companies, financial services or retail customers, to build that data-driven view and to capture the influence any business may have to your ESG rating. If you are directly or indirectly related to a badly rated ESG company, the framework being data-driven will quantify, will capture, will propagate, and will show you that positive or negative influence to your brand, to your suppliers, to your investments. How do you act then uh, on this ESG rating? It's really endless opportunities. So you want to look at this from a supply chain perspective. You want to look at this from a market risk perspective. In this example, I create a simple synthetic portfolio made of 40 or 15 equities. I simply download historical data of their stock returns. And I overlay with my data-driven ESG score. Interestingly, the best and the worst score in my framework correspond to the best and the worst performance in my portfolio. I apply this with more data to understand more than just two data points. And yes, ESG is directly correlated with market volatility. Badly ESG related have in my example, a risk that is two times higher, leading paving the way towards a more agile view of risk management, such as what is your risk exposure to the E, to the S, to the G? What action should you take to reduce that risk? How do you effectively operate in a more operational resiliency by applying ESG framework, this data-driven view across your suppliers, across your investments? And how do you package all that information in a way that can be consumed by your lines of business to the use of dashboards, to the use of SQL, to make that information actionable. What is the key ESG strategy? What is the positive, the negative impact? How much of your score was reduced or improved based on a data-driven versus a disclosure? And what action, what article, what event may have affected your brand or your competitors or your supply chain in a positive or negative way? If you have any question about migrating from a marketing concept of CSR to a data-driven ESG and acting upon those ESG ratings to a data-driven way, uh, me and my colleague Junta will be more than happy to sit down with you and your practitioner to enable that transformation, knowing that all those notebooks are publicly available and can be used today on a Databricks on Partners. Thank you very much.